turn this on. Faint not. Faint not. Now, physically, I don't want you to faint during the service, all right? We were, we were at a service where uh, the, pre the speaker fainted. Man, it messed up the whole service. <laughs> it turned out afterwards, he was, he was preaching this passage. It turned out afterwards he was faking it. And he did it just as an illustration of this verse. <laughs> and boy, it made a commotion, I'll tell you what. <laughs> they called an ambulance and people were angry. <laughs> it, uh, I've never forgotten it. That happened 30 years ago. <laughs> um, anyway, faint not. We've, we've been looking at the book of 2 Corinthians. I, I find the book I'm preaching is my favorite book. <laughs> and uh, you know, I get such a blessing out of this. Uh, we saw in chapter 1, some of the reasons God allows trouble and how, to, how he deals with it. You know, he comforts us so that we can then comfort others. Uh, in chapter 2, we, we looked at overcoming Satan's devices. And we're, we're continuing that study on Wednesday nights right now. And then chapter 3, we looked at dealing with criticism. Boy, there's, a, there's an issue we need to know how to handle, don't we? And, and the main key is live the truth. You know, if criticism comes and it's true, deal with it. <laughs> if it's not true... Ignore it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the main thing. And the, the second part of dealing with criticism was look to Jesus. You know, God can, uh, can help us in, in all of our situations. In, in uh, chapter 3 and verse 18, uh, he says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You know, looking to Jesus. He's going to help us, even when people are criticizing. And then the next chapter starts with, therefore. So anytime you see a therefore, you look and see what it's there for. And he's just saying, because of, uh, of uh, he says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, because we're servants of the Lord, uh, he says, as we've received mercy, we faint not. Now let me read chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we've received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's some great verses there. He, he has three we-haves in this chapter. The first one is in verse 1, we have this ministry. We have this ministry. And when you see something like that, you need to ask yourself, well, what is this ministry? But he goes on and he says, as we've received mercy, we faint not. It's interesting that instead of receiving judgment as Christians, we've received mercy. And we deserve judgment, but God shows us mercy. And not only mercy, then he gives us a position. He gives us a job. We have this ministry. And God calls us to, to serve him. Uh, what a blessing. I guess our ministry is kind of noted in who we are. We're saints. <laughs> the Bible says as Christians, we're saints and we're ambassadors for Christ. We represent Christ. We have the, the ministry. Uh, verse 5 says, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. We have the ministry of representing Jesus. That's a big job. You know, if uh, someone was here representing the queen, Oh, we'd be all excited, you know. And for the world, I don't, I don't know who it might be, but, you know, some movie star or something, we'd, oh, the people would get all the flutter. We represent the Lord. That's a big job. It's an important job. We have this ministry. Um, back in chapter 3, verse 6, he said, who, hath, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. We have the ministry of presenting God's Word. We preach Christ. We're, we're disciples. And one of the ways we do that, he says there in verse 2, uh, 
The negative is, he says, that we don't do it by handling the Word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Uh, we preach Christ by preaching the truth. Uh, we don't have to use tricks. And we appeal to people's conscience by using the truth. Now, that's really important. It's not, I hate to tell you this, but you're not the Holy Spirit. Okay? Sorry. <laughs> Neither am I. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit hit people's conscience. You don't have to, you know, I go like this because that's what we do. You, you know, we get after people. We want to hit their conscience. And for some reason we think this finger will do it, you know. <laughs> but that's not the Holy Spirit. And if we'll use God's word, and if we'll use the truth, God's Holy Spirit will hit people's conscience. Now, some of you have seen the, uh, the films where where the man goes out in public and he, he asks people about the Ten Commandments. What's his name? Uh, Ray Comfort. He'll ask people about the Ten Commandments. And then he'll get specific. Well, you, you know, have you, have you kept them? And boy, you just see their faces fall as, they, as the Word of God hits their conscience. Most people start off saying, yeah, I've, I've been pretty good. But as he goes through the Ten Commandments, man, they've lied, they've cheated, they've stolen. Most of them have committed adultery. I mean, they've broken all of them. And, uh, you know, their faces just fall as God's word hits their conscience. That's what we need to do. It's not us that needs to hit their conscience. Uh, we have a ministry, and our ministry mainly is centered around God's word. In verse 4, he, our ministry involves presenting the gospel. We have the light. And the way to get rid of darkness is just to shine the light. <laughs> we don't have to scoop the darkness away. Uh, we just shine the light of, of the gospel. And he calls it there the glorious gospel. It's wonderful. Uh, verse 6, uh, we, we preach Christ by just bringing them to Jesus. Uh, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He says we have this ministry, preaching Christ. And this ministry, this glorious ministry will change us. If you'll let it, it'll change you. Number one, and that's, that's the title tonight... It should keep us from quitting. But when you see the importance of what God has called us to, you're being a Christian, representing Christ, that's an important thing. And he says, therefore, seeing we, have this, uh, seeing we have this ministry, as we've received mercy, we faint not. This ministry should keep us from quitting. I heard of a, a preacher who was discouraged, and he was talking to another preacher. And he said, I, you think I should just quit? And the man said to him, listen, the angels around the throne envy what you get to do. <laughs> and it's true. You know, the angels don't, God didn't call the angels to, to represent him, to preach the gospel. God called us. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. We have, this, we have this ministry. It should keep us from quitting. Secondly, it should keep us from deceiving. Now listen, Satan is the deceiver. Uh, verse 2, we've, we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Listen, Satan is the great deceiver. Let me tell you why. What he's offering is death. <laughs> he can't go up and say, listen, you follow me, I'll, I'll kill you and send you to hell. <laughs> he's got to deceive people. He's got to make them think there's something good about what he has to offer. He's, he's like the hook and the bait. Oh, come on, take a bite, take a bite. <laughs> he wants you to see the bait and not the hook. We don't have to do that. We have the truth. We can just present the, the very truth of, of, of God's word, the light, the glorious gospel. We offer life. He has to use tricks. We don't. <laughs> you know, there's no trick to talking to people about the Lord. We just need to get them to God's word. Get them to God's word. The glorious gospel. You know, religion says do, do. Keep doing it. God says, done. And what a blessing. You know, Jesus has done it all. And we, there's nothing we have to do to work salvation's plan. It's done. But we don't have to deceive people. Thirdly, one of the ways this, this ministry changes us is it should keep us from promoting self. You know, we live in a world of people promoting self. Verses 5 and 6, uh, he says, we preach not ourselves. But Christ Jesus the Lord. Listen, we're not the message. People don't have to see us. Now, 
your testimony will, will make a difference. Don't, don't misunderstand that. Uh, there's people who will see, oh, something going on there, and they'll, they'll want to know our, our Lord. But we're not the message. Uh, earlier in chapter 1, verse 9, he said, We have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead. In chapter 3, verse 1, he said, Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Uh, the important thing is not you or me. It's the Lord. That's the ministry we have. In, in verse 6, I love the way he puts this here. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You hear those, those last few words? What we're trying to get people to do is to look into the face of Jesus Christ. That's what we want to happen. And if they'll meet Jesus, they'll love him. He's a wonderful Savior. You know, the devil tricks him. He, he doesn't want him to look. He doesn't want the light to shine. But we don't have to be like that. In chapter 3 and, and verse 18, it says, We all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. See, we're, we're to be looking in the face of Jesus. Are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. See, that's our message. As we look to Jesus, as through His Word we look into His face, that's what we then can share with others. We can share Christ. We can share His Word. Uh, the, the devil says, oh, don't shine the light. Oh, they don't want to talk about Jesus. But we have this ministry. We have the glorious gospel. Uh, we, present, we present Christ. The second we have is there in verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Uh, there's a couple of things there. One, we're earthen vessels. We're not Superman. All right? Uh, that doesn't say that, but uh, that, that's, that's what it means. Uh, we're just the container. We're just a vessel. And he, even, he doesn't even say aluminum or gold. or <laughs> He says earth, dirt. Uh, we're earthen vessels. And we're going to experience trouble. Look at the next few verses. Let me read verse 7 again. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed. Man, you, you've been there. We don't know what's going on. We just have to say, well, I guess in heaven I'll understand. But not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. We're going to experience trouble. And one of the things that people need to see when we go through trouble, they need to see Jesus in us. Now, one, there's a couple things here. Keep your focus right. Re remember, we do have a treasure. All right? We do have a treasure. So focus on the treasure, not on the container. You understand what I'm saying? Focus on the content, not the package. Now, the devil is a deceiver. He wants you to focus on the package. Oh, there's a crack in the package. Oh, it's, having, it's stained. It's having trouble, the package. But we have a treasure in that package. That's the key. Keep your focus on the treasure, not the container. See, our importance, our usefulness is not us. It's what we contain. I, I like to illustrate this with uh, dishes and a meal. Now, I know what I'm looking for when I go for a meal. It's a good plate, right? <laughs> no, you know me, you know men, now, we don't care what kind of plate you put on, put it on a paper plate for all we care, put it on a banana leaf, we had one meal in Singapore, it was on a banana leaf, and you throw it away when you're done, you know, that's just the container, the important thing is the meal, but you know, I've noticed something about the container that I do value, I want it available and clean, and when I want to eat, I want a plate, you know, I don't want to open the dishwasher and say, are these clean, you know, 
uh, on a clean plate. And that's us. We need to be available and clean. That's our importance. But we're not the preeminent part. The Bible says that in all things, he might have the preeminence. We need to keep our focus on the treasure, not the container. Our part is just to stay clean and available. The second thing I would say about this is focus on the master and not the servant. In this relationship, uh, we have this, uh, this treasure in earthen vessels. It's a master-servant relationship. He's the treasure. Uh, we're the earthen vessels. Um, the, the Bible says in Colossians 1, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's the important part of this relationship. Look at verse 10 there. Verse 10 and 11 are not easy verses, but uh, he says, Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. And when he talks about this trouble that we go through, some of the trouble you'll go through will be because you're a Christian. Paul certainly was. He was in prison many times because he was a Christian. Uh, you can have persecution because of being a Christian. And he says, we bear his death that we might show his life. You know, the trouble we go through, it really, it's an opportunity to show the life of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, if, if as a Christian you're persecuted and you swear at him, that's not going to show the life of Christ. <laughs> But if you pray for them, like Jesus said, pray for them that, what's the word, despitefully use you. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's being like Christ. Anybody can like someone who's nice to them. But Christ loved those who were his enemies, us. And we can be like Jesus. We can focus on the master, not on the servant. Verse 11, he says, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Again, very similar. Uh, we're going through these troubles, and it can be a, a message to the world. It uses the word there, manifest. Uh, Jesus is manifest in our, our mortal flesh. Uh, it's our responses to troubles that will bring glory to Jesus. You know, there's, there's people now who preach all this, you know, wealth and happiness and you know, all that stuff. Um, and, and that's fine. I don't mind being, I wouldn't mind being wealthy and happy and all those things. But listen, that's not necessarily the testimony that God is going to give me. You know, we're going to go through things. I'm amazed all the things our, our little church is going through. They're different individuals. And listen, we need to grab hold of these verses and live them. We need to let God use them for good. Don't focus on the container. Focus on the treasure what God is, is doing. Verse 12, I think, is a really interesting verse. He says, So then death worketh in us, but life in you. And what I think he's saying there is that for them to get the gospel, he had to risk death. You know, death, it, you, you read all the suffering Paul went through. For him to take the gospel to the people at Corinth, man, he, his life was on the line. And eventually it cost him his life. Death worketh in us, but life in you. It made me think, well, can anyone say that about me? <laughs> can anyone say that about you? you know, what, what have you uh, risked uh, to take the gospel to others? Uh, but we need to be encouraged. Even though we have a difficult ministry, it's a great ministry. It's a great ministry. And we have a treasure to use. We have a treasure to offer. But the third thing, we also have a helper. Verse 13 we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. So we have three we haves. Uh, we have this ministry. Uh, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The third one there, verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith. Same as who? Same as Jesus. That's what he's saying there in verse 14. <coughs> he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus. The same spirit of faith that raised Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. Uh, there's a couple of verses in, in Romans I wanted to read here. Uh, Romans 8, verse 16 through 18. 
He says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What a great verse. He's just talking about we have that same spirit of faith, the same Holy Spirit that uh, was in Christ, the same Holy Spirit that was in the, the apostles, the same, the same faith as, as Jesus Christ. Joint heirs. You know, the Holy Spirit can help us. The Holy Spirit can produce His fruit in us. We should have a confident faith. Let me show you some things here. Verse 14, he says that we're sure of victory, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. We have the victory. The resurrection of Jesus is, is true in our lives. And when we face eternity, we know that, uh, I've read the back of the book, we win. We're sure of victory. Verse 15, we're sure of God's glory, for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Right, we're going to see God triumph. We're going to see God's glory. We can be sure of that. And whatever we're going through, we can know that there's victory in Jesus, uh, that, that all of this is going to work for, for God's glory. Verses 16 and 17, we can have a confident faith because we can be sure that trials have a good purpose. Let me read verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. We can be sure that our trials have a good purpose. And we can be sure of eternity. Verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. In Hebrews, he says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Our faith is what carries us through. Uh, we can be sure of heaven. There's some great lessons here, I think. Number uh, one, verse 16 Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Aren't you glad to know God is continually renewing you? Yeah, we face all kinds of things. He's able to say, for the which cause we faint not, though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. As you get older, you, you realize the literal meaning of that verse. <laughs> we literally are perishing. You know, we're breaking down. Uh, you'll see some of those athletes. Uh, they were showing a guy who'd want to go... 40 years ago. Yeah, he a good athlete 40 years ago. He's an old man now. <laughs> His body's perishing. Uh, that's the way it is. And as Christians, uh, that's true physically. And, and uh, what's true, it's true of us as well. We need to understand God is renewing us inwardly. We don't have to worry about the outward container, the shell, as much as we do the inward man, the treasure that's there. Secondly, in verse 17, here's a, a great lesson. Afflictions are temporary. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. You know, in James, he calls our life a vapor. He had a cup of tea lately and put the kettle on, you know, and the, the steam comes up, and where does it go? You know, who knows? It just disappears. Uh, he said, that's, that's the way our life is. Our life is just so short compared to eternity. And if we have a, a godly value system, you know, if we were thinking about eternity, we will realize, hey, this, this won't be for long. You know, if it's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, that's still not going to be very long in light of eternity. You read through the book of Acts, and you'll see places where it'll say, it'll just be in a line, you know, and, and Paul was in that prison two years. Two years. <laughs> Man, that would be a long time for me, I would think. But, boy, it's just one line in Scripture, and he was just willing to serve the Lord in that way. Whatever he was doing, you know, it doesn't even tell us. Uh, but afflictions are, are temporary. A good way to view it is that your life is a seed planted for God. You take a seed, stick that thing in the dirt, you know, from the seed's point of view, that's not a very nice thing to do. And in a sense, that seed is going to die. It's going to quit existing as a seed. Oh, and become this beautiful plant. <laughs> you know, that's what we are. 
Uh, our life is a seed to be planted for God. He brings life out of death. And, and really, this is, this is a real key point here tonight. Uh, most of our inner turmoil, uh, most of our trouble, most of our stress comes from living for the temporary. You know, if you value, if you highly value the container, if you highly value the situation rather than eternity, man, you can have amazing stress. We've all experienced it. You know, you decide, I've got to get this done in six weeks. What I'm thinking about was a house that I restored. <laughs> I, I forgot you're doing that, sorry. <laughs> uh, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself. Wait, were you really thinking eternity? I hope that house is not with me in eternity. <laughs> I remember that house. I mean, I touched every square bit of that thing, you know. And uh, it, we might as well turn it down. I don't know. But uh, it was a nice house, and don't, don't get me wrong. But eternity will be better than that. You know, we can make something so important. Get into an appointment. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to miss your appointment. You might get fired. You might get a better job. I mean, be positive about it. Uh, this is a really important point here. Afflictions are temporary. Uh, There's a song we used to sing, and not in our hymnal, but not here for long. I'll soon be leaving. This old world of sin and woe, up above the clouds I'll go. Not here for long. Now, we need to remember that. Life is just a vapor. Let trouble remind you, heaven is on the way. Heaven's on the way. Verse 18, he talks about that. We, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. I haven't seen heaven yet. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. A life is a stepping stone to eternity. What you value makes all the difference. And Jesus said in Matthew 6 and, and verse 21, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Such an important statement. What we value. I remember when we uh, moved into one house, I don't remember why, but uh, the curtains were up. My wife didn't care about them, didn't want them. So I used them for drop cloths. Well, one of the church ladies came by, and oh, she was just horrified. Oh, those curtains. Oh, you've ruined the curtains. <laughs> uh, we had a different value system. Now, I, I'm not saying whether curtains are valuable or not, but uh, in life, how you value something makes so much difference. And if we have eternal values, it will make such a difference in the stresses and strains of life. Listen, we won't be here for long. Uh, Jesus made a, a strange and interesting statement in Luke 14. We've read this several times lately. But he talks about hating when he says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now he's talking there about what we value. We need to value him more than others, more than ourselves. He cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Listen, if you value your life, you may be upset in the ways God will use you. You might think you're a glorious curtain and God will say, this will make a good drop cloth. <laughs> For your life. Uh, you know, what did the psalmist say? I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. You know, whatever the Lord wants for us really is what we should be willing to do. Now, there's things in life that are easy to say, hard to do. You know, it's easy to say, Lord, I'll be your servant until someone treats you like a servant. Now, we need to be careful with what our values are. We have a treasure. It's not us. It's the Lord. Now to him, we're, we're a treasure in that sense. But as Christians, we're not poor in Christ. We have Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the gospel. We have victory. We have heaven. We have glory. <laughs> you can go on and on, couldn't you? All the treasures that we have in him. Now, I love how he puts it in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. We have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God. We have an excellent treasure. <laughs> This is not just any treasure. In verse 17, he says, 
Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding. We have an exceeding treasure and eternal weight of glory. We have an eternal treasure. Man, that's better than any treasure you'll get here on earth. You know, some of these, these people, they, they work so hard, they win a gold medal. Commonwealth Games, Olympics, whatever. Uh, I remember one guy had to sell it to, to make money. Another guy, he got so upset with something, he threw it in the river. <laughs> uh, you know, that's not an eternal glory. That's not an eternal treasure. It, it's not a, an excellent or an exceeding one. The Bible says, don't faint. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as, we, as we've received mercy, we faint not. We have a job to do. We have a valuable treasure. We have the same spirit of faith, same as Jesus, same Holy Spirit. And he says in 2 Corinthians 2.14 that he always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in, in every place. Uh, there's encouragement in the Lord. Uh, God has given us uh, his treasure, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we might be saved. God has, value, has given us value by who we can contain in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you. Uh, life is tough. <laughs> and as you go on, I'm sorry to report this, but it, it can get tougher. But it's, it's not for long. It's not permanent. God goes with us. God has a, a good purpose. And if we'll view the eternal, it can make all the difference. If we'll have eternal values, it can make such a difference. Uh, in our life. Who knows what might be ahead in the days and months and years to come. We've certainly been through things we never expected. I know I have. Many of you have. But you know, the Lord can see you through. And the Lord can use it for good. The, the problem is getting self, getting myself out of the way so that God can, can do something. Uh, God always has a good purpose. And uh, just look for what, what God is doing. Let me encourage you tonight. Uh, these are encouraging words. We have this ministry. We have this treasure. And we have the same spirit of faith. God's Holy Spirit can help us through. Uh, I thought we'd finish tonight by singing page 341, Victory in Jesus. Page 341. Let's uh, take our song books. And uh, Azrael, you come and, and lead us. Maybe a first and last verse. Let's sing.